Uh, last night, Spurs were valiant. They went down 110-105 with a bunch of dudes that don't play a whole lot in Wimby. Uh, they didn't have a Keldon. They didn't have Devin. Uh, and they, uh, well, they won't have uh, Devin for the rest of the year. And uh, Jeremy, he's got an impinged ankle. I can't wait to ask Dr. Garrett what that means. Uh, with about them, though, you know, the Spurs started fast. I liked the spacing on the court. It looked like, you know, everybody was out to run. Nobody was in the way. Everybody was into the giving. It was a good to better, better to best kind of a night. Everybody was a willing passer. A victor led the, you know, the offense half the time. And they were competitive all night long against the world champions, minus three of their best players. How does that happen? I know they lost. And I don't really like moral victories but this was one of those for the spurs i mean they went toe to toe and i'm not gonna even act like this was denver playing you know in a you know the meme when someone's mm -hmm. playing a video game and it's like okay now i gotta sit up and take it seriously this was denver sitting back <laughs> relaxing you know blanket on their lap kind of one there's hand something to that yeah like one hand with the drink you know what i mean and the other hand like oh i guess i'll just i can leave the controller alone for a second while i take a bite of you know cheetos or whatever um, but credit to the Spurs for jumping on that. Not everybody's you know capable of doing something like that. And kudos to the Nuggets, obviously, for being able to ultimately accomplish the, the primary goal. And so, <laughs> but it is impressive. I mean, however, you, you know, context you want to, or whatever context you want to apply to it, it is impressive that the Spurs took the Nuggets, took the world champs, 10 rounds without Devin, without Keldon, without Jeremy, that Wemby almost had a quadruple double and that Trey Jones, despite the fact that we've gone over an hour here today and you haven't apologized to him, had a triple double. Say you were wrong. Admit it. Cry shame. I, I, I refuse to cry shame. Uh, wow. I, I appreciate the young man. Wow. Uh, and I want him to continue his ever-growing success. The pain and last pain. night, uh, hey man, much love. The, it was as what was the? Are you looking at the box, the, the stat box? Of what course. was the assist number? The total assist for the Spurs. Total assist. Total assist was I had the individual score or individual stats. Twenty uh, thirty-three. Thirty-three, not the forty we saw the other night, but very appropriate. A lot of guys scored. Devonte Graham had a lot of minutes last night, which was impressive. Um. Trey played well. It wasn't about triple double, Rob. Apologize. Yes, he he played well. My question to you is, why did everybody look so good while we were missing three of our best guys? Why were we so competitive against the world champions minus those guys? And we were. Now, granted, shot making and um, champagne, dude. Every now and then, he's pretty damn impressive. Um, they they had no business being that close yet. They were. I think the reason, the, in, in a macro sense, is because the dudes in question weren't there. You know what I mean? Like the, the Spurs are not in a position right now where they have four talented guys to filter the ball through. They have one amazing dude that everything has to flow through. He has to be the center. He has to be the nucleus. He has to be the North star. And that was allowed to happen on Tuesday night. Uh, Wimby talked about going into the ball arena uh, shorthand. Let's play one. I mean, it's a, yeah, a good fight. You know, I think we showed some, some great efforts both sides of the court. Um, yeah, you know, experienced team. It's uh, It was a tough, like, like I'm tired right now. It's hard, hard to think that we had a good, good performance. Uh, that was uh, Victor Wimbanyana, tired last night. He had 34 minutes in his effort, filled every box, a near five-by-five, five, near near quad. Um, and you mentioned Trey Jones had a triple-double. Uh, you look at other guys that just brought it last night, Malachi Brenham, 24 points in 37 minutes. Trey Jones, uh, the triple-double, uh, 12, 11, and 10. Uh, the uh, Zach Collins, a valiant, 13 points in 18 minutes. And Blake Wesley, uh, I liked his activity, though. There wasn't a lot of a lot of buckets there. They, it was a good game. The cohesion was there. They're doing what Pop wants them to do. Obviously, they understand the concept. But that concept with the better guys hasn't led them to any more than the wins we've got. As we get closer and closer to the end, especially on the, on the heels of the uh, – 
the Wind Horse Collect, the Hoop Collective, that socialist basketball thing that we talked about yesterday, where even he on the side of his breath, it kind of felt like something you didn't want to have get out. Like, well, you know, not a lot of these guys are very good. I'm I mean, getting the sense that, 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 you know, not a lot of these guys being the Spurs are very good, and only one or two of them are going to be around when true success really arrives. And it's very apparent to me when we don't have, and now it's a small sample size against a team that was kind of sleepwalking. I, I will give you every bit. But when we start looking as good without you as we do with you, that ain't good. That That's not going to, that's not going to help the long-term, uh, your long-term steady here. I hope you're winning. If we if we continue out this season minus three these three guys and it's a victor show from front to back and we're exactly where we were and we're competitive with a minute to go which we couldn't even say that before, uh, got a problem here and guess what at that point I will anoint Trey. At that point I will prove it will be proven that he amongst all the others is the only one to truly get it. This and last sad. night it kind of showed. This, this is sad. The the way you're moving the goalpost to avoid giving. Trey I'm not moving it. I'm just stating the obvious. I think you're being a hater. Trey Jones had a triple double in a game where the Spurs took the Denver Nuggets. Right. Without Devin. Without Keldon. What is that? That says that Trey without... is more conducive to the overall goal. Yes, I just told you. Last night, I'm I mean, believing that Trey is the only dude that gets it. This okay. is how you play with Victor. Get out of his way. Let him do what he wants and eat what's left. And if you'll do that, you're going to win. Trey did that as the point guard watching the other point guard do it and feasted off of it. Okay. I know you won't. No, I'm say giving him his love. For... I come not to bury. I come to praise. <laughs> he gets uh, it. It is fascinating. It's it's more fascinating than after the Spurs beat the Warriors or even the Suns without Wimby. Right? The conversation. No, bring that was... back up. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm sorry. You're talking about Tavarius saying in the brigade bar, nope, Trey ain't it, man. He is left open for a reason. You just want to hate, Rob. You just can't let Trey have his moment in the sun. No, I, I was actually going to disagree with Tavarius. Oh, it's okay. because to... Trey is, is willing to do what he does. It allows Wimby to have the kind of gravity that he deserves. And the gravity is only created when the ball is in his hand. And when it's in his hand, he's still capable at 7'4". And, man, he's loose with the ball. Uh, count his turnovers. Uh, but what it did do is, man, that court looked wide open last night. It just looked Agreed. like there were lanes everywhere. And Victor only had three turnovers. So, well, I'm, again, I, I want to see another game without the other dudes. I want one more game with Wimby and intentionally no Jeremy, no Keldon. Well, Jeremy ain't played anyway, but no Keldon. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, your stress reaction, that, you know, get reacted. We'll see you next year. I want another couple of sample sizes with a couple of with, – with four dudes and Wimby. I want to see what this looks like to close it down because if it looks better or equal, what the hell have we been doing all year? Why, why – what, Devin, Keldon, uh, you are suddenly on the list. We talked yesterday amid the um... – what is your 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 legalistic view of the hoop collective? Um, there, of, of a collective now. in my mind is always socialism, right. and I always come back to the great Margaret Thatcher quote: "Socialism eventually falls apart because eventually other people's money runs out." Uh, so anyway, uh, collective so, uh, that that socialist gathering that Wendy and the crew gathered together with. Talked a lot about the LeBron days in Cleveland because Wendy brought him up, and how. You know, there was never a real proper running mate, right? And that was a big problem, right, right in Cleveland. And I don't, I'm not saying I want that, but you brought up when we were having that conversation about how maybe Trey Young isn't the fit for that. Maybe, maybe Trey Young, and, and we're just using Trey Young as a placeholder here, right. put whoever you want in that spot. But, but maybe Trey Young isn't the right fit because, you know, you don't, you can't have another all star right now, or not, not literally, but you can't have another dude who needs the ball to work and flow through them. 
because the ball has to work and flow through Wimby. And I think we saw that last night. And in a way, Devin, Keldon, even Jeremy are too evolved for where Wimby's at. That's a good point. They're, they're too evolved in their respective careers in a way that Trey is not. Because Trey is still at a much earlier kind of evo- you know, point in the evolution. He can evolve in this role alongside Wimby. They're operating in parallel, but with respect to their particular contributions to the team. And and I don't know that we're at a place we have to we we have to hinder there's a reason why Devin felt you know the comfortable taking the game winning shot in the New Orleans game that we killed him for right that quality has to be trapped and and caught right like it it, it feels like you you know when when you put an ant like the way people feel about animals in a zoo right it's like no like Devin mm-hmm. Keldon and Jeremy might be animals that need to roam free Whereas, you know, because they, they know what the outside world is like, so to speak. They know what life without Wemby in a serious season-long way can be like, and they're chasing that feeling once more. Oh, well, they're going to be chasing it someplace else. Well, yeah, I mean, if that's... You know, you could say Trey isn't as evolved. I think Trey realizes his place in the world and is totally evolved. I think that Keldon, uh, and not specifically, Devin specifically, uh, has chosen to go another route. And I don't see how, it, again, if we get another couple of games where the Spurs continue to stay competitive against teams that are at least trying, and I know this last week, it, there's not a lot of trying going on, but um, Wimby has under four turnovers, three last night. They stay competitive and every box is filled. Man, I think this one-year exhibition uh, will find out the true meaning at the end. As my daddy always told me, the true meaning of a sentence happens after the but. Well, we might be just after the but right now. We might be finding out that uh, this Devin Kelton thing and Jeremy, one of these, two of these, might not be the answer because we shouldn't have been as competitive as we were late last night with a chance to win it with under a minute to go, minus those three guys at the home of the world champions. shouldn't have been like that. I agree with you, but I also agree with, you know, Denver was a little asleep at the wheel, which is why we need to see this another time. Yeah, you know I mean, we, we need to make sure this wasn't just the Nuggets playing with their food, and because it could have <laughs> been, and and if it was, then we don't want to, you know, we don't want to be lulled into a false sense of anything, and even as a Trey Jones believer, which you are very obviously not, um, we need to see more before we sign on a dotted line in a metaphorical sense, of course. And, you know, Denver was shorthanded, as Edwin just uh, told me in my ear. They didn't have Jamal. I I get it. They were a little short. But this is the world champions going against a team with uh, under three wins from being the the worst team in franchise history, minus three of their top scores. Even the the B squad, the Nuggets G League team, should have had a pretty pretty healthy opportunity uh, given the situation because – any team that's starting some of the guys we had playing last night, that's G League stuff. It was. And Wimby carried them that way, doing the things that Wimby wants to do. And that, that's I, I'm, what this – no, but that's what this is all about now. I mean, is what does he want? And what does he want to do? And how do we make it easier for him? How do we make that possible? How do we make that, you know, doable? How do we make that – you know, that this – it's the Wimby show. What, and there's Is no it removing – the impediments to him doing just that uh, yeah. and finding people that will be more cohesive into allowing him to do the things that he did last night. It just seemed a freer, easier Wimby, more court to work with, more open space. He handled the ball. The gravity was created. He offered the dimes. He dropped. He passed. The high pick and rolls were working. Malachi was open in a corner all night long. 20 for 24 points. Yeah. I mean, like, think about that. Like, th- think about the facility, you know, you know, facilitating it when be no disrespect to Malachi, but like that happens when you flow through Wemby, and it's it's easy to overthink things, and it's easy when you have good players like you know Evan Vassell or Elton Johnson or Jeremy Sohan that can allow that to to happen. But I brought this up the other day. What the best meal I ever had? You were a part of. It was at Steak at Del Frisco's, and you told me that the only seasoning they used was salt. 
I mean, you've cooked a lot of meat in your life, right? There's a, it's, it's easy to over season things like that, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. easy to think you got to add, you got to add, you got to add. Sometimes you just let the, the star shine. And it feels like we saw that last night, at least. And we need to make sure that that's the reality that this team can live. Well, we get just a couple more opportunities. I stand by it. If it comes down to a game, make or break the Spurs season, will they be the worst of all time or tied with the worst? I'm for shipping in the Austin Spurs and letting them fight for the good name of uh, our San Antonio Spurs. It's a dream we can have.